All right, let's All right, slap a number on this. Hey, any of you slappers got a number for this episode? Yes. What is it? This is episode number 230. Yes. Very good. I got it. We <laughs> we are driving home from a recording session we just had. Thank you. In front of me right now, these two gentlemen, one of them, I'll let you guess, one of them is uh, a bona fide book connoisseur of James Bond movies. Ahoy there. You've seen all, all of them except two. How many are so not one, one other, I guess I just gave it away. Yeah, I know. The other gentleman has not seen any of them, or so he believes. Well, question, he, question I, I would bet money on you. Like, okay. He said, <laughs> there's no way. I, and how would you prove it? Yeah. <laughs> if I saw one as a kid, like maybe my parents watched it, so, 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 so there's I don't a remem- line. I don't remember. Like, there's a chance you're lying. I don't. <laughs> okay, I'm just going like, to. I don't remember one. I couldn't I, tell you. So I'm going to say right now that you are shaken, not stirred. Is what you? What does that even mean? See? <laughs> See? Shaken, not stirred. Yeah. Like, like a it's drink? A, like, no, no, it's a, no, like it's, 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 no. It's a master. Yeah. It's a masturbation joke. No. But um, what? No, that, that's, James Bond. I mean, I know yeah, that's, that's how he takes his is. martinis. That's that's. Say, I've yeah. seen the Mission Impossible movies. Oh, that's close. I like those. Are they close? No. They're similar. No. Who's the one guy, Pierce Brosnan? Brosnan. He was one, right? Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Very okay, good. so you know more than you're letting on. Yeah, I mean, I, I know who they are. I yeah, mean, you, well, you, you you haven't just woke up. There was the video game up. that came out. It was like the first person player game that I remember back in the day. It was super popular. I didn't, never played it. But I don't know what you're talking about. James Bond. He was on the cover of the game. I think you're lying. Uh, uh, okay, I will ask again. <laughs> if, you, if you were to coach this gentleman on, on where he should start in watching James Bond movies. Well, A, you're throwing me with this fucking gentleman shit. B, uh, anybody that wants to start with a... Uh, anybody that wants to start with a James Bond movie, I would always go to an early Sean Connery. Which one? James Bond. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where I would start. Ahoy there! But I would always say... Why, would, why is that? Because a J- uh, Sean Connery brings us an element of tongue-in-cheek, gaudy. Uh, the delivery is so over the top that it's... Uh, now, I have to say, I don't know... And again, I'm, I'm kind of the same boat as you. I do not know if I've ever seen a Star Trek uh, TV show from start to finish. I want to say I have because as a child, I would watch the test pattern on the TV because we didn't have one for a long time. Early on, then when they, when they got one, it was just it was just outer body, outer worldly experience to, to sit in front of a box here with entertainment in it and blah blah blah. Um, I remember one time getting in trouble because Tarzan was on, and he was running through the jungle, and it was at that moment that I said, "Hey, wait a minute, this is this is a set," and I would never I never I was young at the time, I was about this big, but I'd never watched. A show like that, but he's running, but he's running through the branches, and he's and he's, you know, fighting the fighting the branches out of the because he's about to get killed. And then you'll see the, the the lion or the tiger, whatever animal he is running, whatever predator he is running from, he is running through this brush, and he's fighting his way through. The brush. But it's all clear over here, and the way he's running. I said. And I, the reason why I got in trouble was I stood up and I said something along the lines of "motherfucker, this, that's not there's no trees over here, run over here." <laughs> and then they, then they 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 cast to the other shot with a lion, and it's a lion with a completely different background, and it's all hazy and it's you know nothing like the the, the frame that we just watched. That's where I made my 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 movie. I, I had my Eureka moment with that movie making, but uh, I shouted at the TV, you dumb motherfucker, you, you run this way. Anyway, I got caught. I was loud. Anyway, so uh, back to James Bond. I, I would, uh, you know. Is there anyone that's like, do, do they all kind of try to be the same character? No, no yes. not at all. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yes and no. They, they are definitely the same character. The, 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 the motto is license to kill. So 007. Yeah, is an yeah. agent, you know, secret agent. No, you know, and he has. It's just, it seems unlimited resources, passports, identities, blah blah blah. But he's the same guy. He's the same. The the, the one that was the least believe. I, I didn't see the Timothy Dalton. I mean, he did have one or two. Timothy Dalton have one or two. I want to say I know it was definitely one, but it might have been two. But whatever How it was, James Bond's are there? Uh, yeah, I think Lots there was only one Bond. Only did one movie, and that was. Uh, 
What's his name? Yeah. Pierce Brosnan it was okay. Roger Moore was a very, very, very funny in a in a he didn't mean to be funny, but he was very funny. And there was a, a great show back in Europe many, many moons ago called Spitting Image, and it had these you probably saw it in Land of Confusion, the Phil Collins video, where they would uh, they would make the puppets to look like the celebrities and yeah, spitting image, yeah. So they make these funny, but um, the uh, uh, they had a Roger Moore mm-hmm. doll, and they say, "Roger, show fear," and he would raise an eyebrow. Roger, show excitement, and he'd raise an eyebrow. <laughs> Roger, show, show, you know, show happiness, sorrow, and all the same thing. Just the eyebrow. and that was exactly Roger Moore. Every scene you ever saw him, and he had the same expression, and he was completely British, completely never hair out of place, and and it's it hilarious. It's just so over the top. It was brilliant. So, yeah. George Lazenby is the guy I was trying to remember. He was the guy who only played Bond once. Oh. Two questions. All right. The answer is seven. both? Seven? Yeah. That's not right. Okay. Sorry. No, as you say, wrong. Wrong. Never said that. Yeah. No. no. Who's your favorite Bond and who's your least favorite? Least favorite would have to be Timothy Dalton because I wouldn't even be bothered to go see him. And my most favorite is Daniel Craig only because the James Bond left the shiny candy coated predictable quips you know all that they left all that shit behind and they turned him into a what a, what a real what I, I say real but you know what I mean like a, a much more believable secret agent yeah well, true, 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 I had never read the uh, the novels but I'm told I remember hearing the third George to the actual source material because the new ones uh, nice, yeah they'll you yeah, kids. Uh, let me let me uh, stop for a commercial break. But right at this moment, you'll notice that we have brand new double sided. What? How does he do it? How does he do it? There's cats in front of the TV, right? I go. Rawr! Yeah. How do they do it? These are these are so fine. These are called Willy Warmers. They're a little small, a little snug. Uh, so anyway, um, yeah, brand new. <laughs> Sorry. We also got a uh, uh, coming up. We've got uh, we've got uh, we got some new stuff coming on. You need to uh, you need to check out baggers.com. We thank you for looking and uh, looking very much uh, forward to uh, going to see our friends in Montana next month. Anyway, commercial over. Yes. Back to James Bond. Sorry, your question was one. Who's my favorite? Ja- uh, who's the worst? Have to, the worst. I would have to say, and it's not a bad thing. It's not a slam at all. But it would have to be Roger Moore. Just because it was that stone face, not very, you know, not very, just not very believable. Sean Connery wasn't either, but it was so much fun to watch him. Does James Bond have the same like damsel, the same no. girl? Is the same? All, is different all the time. New girls all the time. Oh, yeah. plenty. Like oh, yeah. every movie, someone different. Yeah. Heard. If we weren't on, if you, if we weren't on Cybercast, I would say Pussy Galore. <laughs> okay. that, that's actually the name of one of the one of the. Uh, yeah. I swear to God. Really? Yeah. I was trying to make a joke. Man, I don't know nothing about James Bond. Sorry. I guess I don't. Wow. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, there's literally a movie called Octopussy. Oh, yeah. I've heard Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Moon, Moonraker. How silly. Have Jaws. Yeah, hold, hold the cat. What about you, dude? Yeah. Uh, oh, Sean sure, Connery, definitely. Is that your favorite? I, I think so, but I'm not as much of a connoisseur of these films as he is. I do really enjoy the Daniel Craig stuff. Um, and it's, it's tough for me to like pick one over the other because they are the Daniel Craig so stuff funny. is yeah it's much more those films have, have a lot more integrity because they're more modern um, and less kitschy let me yes, ask you a original. quick question before I forget sorry Chad I have to butt it but let me ask you this don't say David Bowie pick a, pick somebody to play James Bond right now pick somebody give me a James oh, Bond uh, gosh just somebody who hasn't played him Idris Elba, don't say that. Yeah, because that's he's supposedly tapped. But oh, man, I, I, I can never remember actors' names anymore. My brain okay. doesn't have that ability. How, how would how would you think somebody like a like a like a George Clooney or a uh, how would you think somebody like a uh, George Clooney would do okay? But he's too, he's getting up there in age now. I think. Yeah, what about like a Brad Pitt? Yeah, if you're gonna, uh, no, great. 
He's, he's great, but he's just been around too much. I would want to see somebody who's not been in a whole lot of movies. Well, I, I would say, I would have to say somebody, it would have to be somebody that's that's got that, um, they, def, they, they have to do a believable British accent. And yes, they have to do a, um, perfectly actually be British. <laughs> no, no, not necessarily. Not necessarily. I mean, Roger Moore was probably the ultimate Brit as far as, and, and, and it was just too much for me. But, um, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. <laughs> I could be wrong. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, so, but I honestly, the first person I thought of would be like a, a, a David Boy. I think it would be a, just a magnificent Bond in that he could do all the over the top gaudy. Sure, he's, he's got the suave. So, but he's also got that. He's also got that stature, that tall, thin, you know, but you might not want to fuck with him because you probably die. Uh, you know, the unknown. What about Pauly Shore? <laughs> Pauly Shore? Yeah. James Squeezing Bond. the juice? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, I, actually, I actually think um, you would have to. Who? Henry Cavill, who played Superman. And, and the shitty, the shitty movies, the uh, Snyder, Snyder movies. He's actually a great actor. I think that he can do it. He would have to size down though, because we don't want to want a big buff. James Bond. That's the new Superman guy. That's why. That's no, why, he, that's he why was Superman. Oh. Yeah. Not anymore. What about? Oh, Kenny Reeves. I'm just kidding. John Wayne. I'm kidding. No, he he can't even he can't even play a lamppost. There's a great line in Between Two Ferns with Zach Gal Zach Galifianakis. He said, just stamp twice if you understand what I'm saying. I love it. I think uh, Matt's, this is an actor, a British actor named Matt Smith, I think would be good. He's just making Who's stuff. that? Is he just making news? Matt Smith. Yeah. yeah. He does this all the time. He's like, there's this great actor, he, he was Kevin Martin. Newton. He was, uh, <laughs> yeah. He was Dr. Who. <laughs> See, I'm making all the nerdy shit you guys don't know about. That's why. That's why we, that's why that's we, we, that's why we don't believe you. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so go back, back to what you were saying. You were saying how great I would be as a James Bond. Go ahead. That's mm-hmm. it. It never works. <laughs> oh, I'm saying, I think I prefer the Daniel Craig stuff just because it's less good. The Sean Connery stuff was great fun. But that, that's a, that, that, those movies are dated. To it was supposed to be. Yeah. And, uh, push it, push it a little more. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe that's real. That's real? Yeah. What? That's uh, real. You yeah. don't mess with me. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that, that, that's what you call a joke gone wrong, but it's true. <laughs> No, I, I really, I tried to make a pussy galore joke and it didn't work. It's okay. I'm not bad. Hey, come with us. Commercial over. <laughs> so, who's your least favorite? Did you say? Your least favorite James Bond? I, I'm probably with you on Timothy Dalton, the one you didn't see. <laughs> did you see it? Yeah. Was that uh, a new one? It was okay, but I think Pierce Brosnan was better. Oh, I think Pierce Brosnan was wonderful not yeah. just because he's Irish but I mean his his, uh, his delivery was spot on in that but he, he was between and I mean in a good way he was between Connery and, Mo- and Moore in the you know not too he yeah. is very funny he's got a great delivery but he's not too not too funny he's not too right. serious yeah. you know and there's I, I'm still kind of I mean the the yeah, the Roger Moore movies are, are the silliest, I think. I mean, even more silly than, than uh, Sean Connery. Moonraker was hysterical. Because as somebody else pointed yeah. out that, that, that Sean, I mean, sorry, that the Roger Moore James Bond was more like a superhero than, than the uh, yeah. the other ones. Because he would, would be doing things that human beings really just can't survive yeah. normally. I uh, did like the, okay, okay, here's, here's one for you. And again, I apologize. I apologize to all the people that don't, have no idea who James Bond is or what it is. But what was your favorite car? Oh, oh, that's, that's, that's I was just going to say that. That's why that's I was why going. I okay, that's I, why. I give Roger more points because he drove the, the undersea. You know, the, that was pretty the cool. amphibious Lotus, which was fucking amazing. And I have a toy. I have the Corgi uh, model of the Lotus, which you push a button on it and the and the, and the thing stick out. That is fucking cool. <laughs> Dude, I love your guys' excitement right now. And it used to shoot. It used to. I lost it as a kid, but it had little missiles on the back. The push a button and the missile would shoot out. They don't make toys like that anymore because they got recalled. Kids choking on missiles. Yeah. I like when kids choke on it. Hey, stop it. Stop it. God. Anyway. Moving on. 
<laughs> so you guys do not have songs to kill, is that correct? Correct. No. Shoot. I got movies to watch. Yeah, you do. Okay, um, this is going to be continued. We're going to get our wonderful fourth wheel on here so we can get really, really, really good. Really, really, really great time. So we'll get, uh, we'll get Heidi on and we'll do this. We'll, we'll, we'll finish up strong. Yeah, by the time you see this, we'll have already done Trilogy and we'll already have something new in the merch tubs. But uh, until then, just hang tight. This is going to be a rather long commercial break for us, but not for you because our editor knows jujitsu. So why don't you all be nice to each other? Enjoy the Slappercast episode number 230. 230. 230. 230. Yes. It's jacked up. And then, yeah. So 230. Yes. You said it earlier. I did it right? Yeah. I got it. I only perform once, not twice. <laughs> Ooh, that means you do it right. You don't have to go. Okay, that's right. Got it, got it, got it. Note to self. One or done. They would say in Ireland, in some parts of Ireland anyway, to Turkey. No, they'd say fuck off. They say fuck off. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, thanks for listening. <laughs> As you can see, we have the lovely, the irreplaceable Miss Heidi Riggs. Hi, Heidi. Howdy, Heidi. Hi. There she is. <laughs> How's everything in Phoenix? Good. Hot. Are you hotter than Houston? I don't know. It's been around 115. You're hotter. So <laughs> you win. I don't know. <laughs> you win. <laughs> Ouch. It's not, it's not humid yet, though. It'll be humid soon, but it's not yet. Not, not terribly humid. So I don't know. Houston can feel hotter. Oh, yeah. Just yeah. Are you? Our humidity is is world famous. Yeah. Yeah. We walk outside and it's like an oven or like a blow dryer in your face. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Houston is like a sauna in comparison. Yeah. Yeah. What's your favorite thing about summer in Phoenix? Mm -hmm. That's tough, isn't it? My favorite? Yeah, it is. (laughs) Um, I like that there's no school. (laughs) Not that I go to school, but it's yeah. nice, you know, just not to have that extra routine. <laughs> a little more relaxed. Traffic's a little easier, right? No. Yeah. Traffic is still Traffic's- terrible. <laughs> is it really? Wow. Huh? We, I know it's a, hu- yeah, I know it's a huge people- difference. Really? In go traffic? People, what? Like cars on the road? Yeah. Much less. No, not here. It, in fact, people drive like they're angry because it's hot. So, like, yeah. <laughs> the roads are more dangerous in the summer. There's more road rage. When you go by that car with all the windows open and you know that they don't have AC, do you ever go really quietly past them, like, uh, you, you know, that nervous that they that they might just shoot just for, just because your windows are up? I always see those people. <laughs> they always look like they're just about to fucking die. Just, to, you know, because you don't get yeah. any relief. Like, like you say, the hot, the hair dryer blowing in your face. You don't get any relief at that. It, it's just it just moves the air, the hot air to you quicker. <laughs> it's it's ugly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. My first car was that that way. It's a 1979 Honda Civic. Had no air conditioning, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was pretty brutal. Mm-hmm. So, Chad, yeah, what's your favorite thing about the summer? Favorite thing about the summer? Uh, not going outside. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's win- that's that's winter Actually, for you too. It, yeah. What what I was just thinking one of, one of my favorite things about not favorite things but it's kind of an odd thing about Houston air conditioning I remember this going way back like you you're in an office building with the AC is just cranking you know it's like sixty degrees inside or something and then you yeah. walk outside into the you know ninety degree humidity and it's like it's for first for a brief second it's actually pleasurable you're you're stepping into this this heat. It's it's and the, the the difference in in uh going from the freezing cold <laughs> to to this warm embrace for a minute is like oh that feels nice, and then like a minute later like oh that sucks. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. That only happens in the summertime here. <laughs> yep. And it only happens with really good air conditioning. Yeah, I managed to go out yesterday in the heat of the day and cut the grass, and I I, I wait until the I wait until after lunchtime to do it just so I can. You know, it's, 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 it's that punishment. It just feels like it's like, the, you, know, you should be, you should be getting some kind of benefit from it, but it was, it was, uh, I was seeing stars by the end of it. It was just, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's intense. I, I mean, I, I really do. I like the heat. I'm the wrong person for it because I can sweat just thinking about it. So it, it's, it's, it, it's, <laughs> you know, we, we don't get along the heat and I, but I, I still, I'll take it over the cold any day, any day.
Ahoy there! So uh, while we're thinking about it, let's let's uh, let's kill these songs. Uh, <laughs> All right, I, I, I'm I'm ready. I'm, I'm going to go first because I'm yapping already. So the one I wanted to kill was that I was in. I, I've always disliked the song. And again, just let me let me put uh, put a little caveat or a little you know just a disclaimer or a claimer, whatever you want. But I'm thinking this is not a slap or a you know crapping on any of these bands. I was watching a Henry Rollins clip the other day. And Henry Rollins is so uh, his his thoughts and his actions are. I, I just wish that we had somebody like that in in power, like making decisions for the country. He's just he's so well rounded. It, it, but it kind of sh- shook me up a little bit as far as, as awards and bands and music and art and all this stuff. And he he said something that was just extremely poignant, you know, as he as he normally does. But you know the when we kill a song, we're not crapping on that band. It's just a song that we just don't want to hear anymore. And that's not a slight or it's not a slam on the, you know, well, maybe so, sometimes it is. Cause I mean, there are, there are sometimes, some bands. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There are some fair. bands that you just, yeah, you just have to, but with that, with that said, uh, I, I just, I just didn't like anything by this woman, by her band. The, the, so the, 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 in case I killed it already, or it's been killed, I'm going to kill, uh, 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 Heaven is a place on earth by Belinda Carlisle. And in case I haven't, in case I killed that one or if anybody else killed that one, uh, our lips are sealed by the Go-Go's, which is the ultimate virgin song. Um, and I don't like either of those three. So, uh, uh, just kidding. The reason why the Heaven on Earth, song, it's just so fucking annoying and they just don't know when to, a hook is a wonderful thing. A hook in a song is just a tremendous, especially when it's done well. I, I'm not a fan of the song Come On Eileen by Dexie's Midnight Runners. However, it's a great hook and the, there's a great, uh, you know, it's a great bridge and on and on and on. I don't, I don't like the song. That's, that's fine. I'm sure they got lovely things to say about me too. But, um, but that song, Heaven is Placed on Earth is so repetitive and it's so, yeah, uh, it's just so drab. You know, it's just to me, it's just so it was written for a radio hit and attained that well done. But I don't ever I, I want to be close to that. So that's that's my kill. And my my yeah. uh, my little my, my my song of delight. I just can't believe it wasn't a bigger hit. It was a small hit, I believe, in the 70s. But uh, uh, Jerry Reed's She Got the gold mine, uh, I Got the Shaft. I just think it's, I, I love I love songs with humor and and, you know, good tempo and good hook and whatever. And Jerry Reed to me is the epitome of uh, a, a a songwriter that can just stick his personality right up the, um, no, right in the, in the middle of his, you know, of his art. And he is, he is, when you see him, when you hear him, when you hear about him, everything that he portrays in his music, he lives. And I just, I, I love that song. I just think Jerry Reed is one of the, uh, and again, he should be as big, if, you know, as Johnny Cash or uh, Elvis or something. I mean, he is that brilliant. So they're, they're, they're my songs. Next, please. And... You want me right, to go next? <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's a song that a lot of the bands here, like, do for, you know, like casino gigs, corporate gigs, like a party song. And I just don't get it. <laughs> um, it's okay. So I think Chad, you were talking one time and you killed the song. Um, you were talking about Bruno Mars' Uptown Funk. Yes. And the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sing the bass line. <laughs> How they what the bass line? They sing the bass line. They say, oh yeah, do 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 yeah yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so yeah. this is a Bruno Mars song that's like right up with that one. Just ridiculous. Twenty four karat magic in the air. I think it's just called 24K. And it's so, so ridiculously stupid. It just, I mean, everyone fills the dance floor when we start that oh, song. Wow. The, the, it's a song I do. What's it called again? 24 Carat. Okay, 24 God. I think this is a third Bruno Mars song we've killed on the show. <laughs> it's pretty bad. You have to listen yeah. to it at least once. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. Definitely... It's got so, really I'll, I'll... weird, like, keyboard in the background it just sounds so goofy it sounds like martians are landing or something mm. 
So is 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 it worth <laughs> is it is it worse than Get Down Tonight by Casey and the Sunshine Band? It is worse. Yeah, I can okay. I can stand doing that one. I just yeah I, that, okay okay I I just want to get a level for because I don't know any of his stuff so. Chris, all right, shine a light. It what is you got? Worse. <laughs> okay, I love this song. Recently, I can't get it out of my head. Um, Wildflowers by Dolly Parton. Hmm. Not not the Wildflowers, Tom Petty Wildflowers that everyone covers, yeah. but Wildflowers yeah. by Dolly Parton. Yeah. I I love the melody. I love the way she sings it, and the lyrics are I, great. So I know. Uh, yeah, she's a great lyricist. I I, I I I don't. I can't put my. I just can't get my head on the tune uh, of Wildflowers. I know. I know it. I just can't. I just can't think of it off the top of my head. Oh, it's great. You have to, you have to dig it up. I, I will dig it up. I'll dig it up. And uh, uh, Wildflowers, uh, Tom Petty, we were talking about. The, uh, um, oh, uh, Jungle Boogie, have you ever played that? Yeah. I love that fucking yeah, bass line. That and, dis <laughs> that, and disco, that and Disco Inferno, my favorite bass lines, I think, in, in, in a disco song yeah. or a dance song. Oh, my God. Anyway, yeah, I sorry. Heard, I'm, I'm, I haven't done that one in a long time. Yeah. That's a good song. I may be a, that may that may be that may be a blackguard a blackguard song. All right, Chad, start killing. What you got? All right, yes, I was muting because there's somebody's doing lawn work or yard work outside. Manscaping so it might be some noise. Yeah, maybe he is. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we killed somebody killed that song, or maybe do we maybe just talk about? It? I know it's been killed at some point. That song. I, I'm I'm proud to be an American. Or at least I know I'm free. That song. Whoever the hell does that song. Heidi, you weren't here, but but uh, when we did that T Bone T Bone Tom's gig with Jeff, there was a piano guy playing across the street who covered that song at one point. So we were talking about that, and uh, but it also made me think of this. And I, I I'm not mad at Paul McCartney for writing this song, but Lee, I can't stand Lee, it. Lee Greenwood sang that one. Lee right? Greenwood, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. good, yeah, thanks. I wouldn't have known that. Well, Paul McCartney wrote a song. It was a concert for New York. And he was flying over there for that. And he just happened to have a documentary film crew with him. So it's actually, I mean, the documentary itself is fun to watch because it's just an interesting document of that period where he was called to do that concert and everything. And, uh, but he just he wrote a song for the occasion of, of that concert, Freedom. I don't, I don't know if any of you remember this song. It's very forgettable. <laughs> so, and, and he's like, I, I, we will fight for the right to live in freedom. It's extremely cheesy. <laughs> like two or three chord song they come up with. But the funniest thing about it is in the documentary, you see him as they're preparing for this concert, Paul's going around to all the other musicians and actors and celebrities who are participating in this concert, showing the song to them. And he's really excited, but, and everybody seems to have the same reaction. It's sort of like, yeah, Paul, that's great. I, I, can we talk later? I got to go. <laughs> Cause it's really just not that great of a song. Oof. It's not, it's just not a good song. Sorry, Paul. So I'm killing that. <laughs> and uh the song i'm shining a light on is a little bit out of my usual milieu uh who is a french word uh the, <laughs> that's a singer named jane who is a french uh pop singer j a i n jane and she had a big hit which actually is seeing a resurgence now in the states now called makiba or makiba is how she says it in the song it's all over tiktok right now and I heard, I've heard it a few times, and like after I'd heard it a bunch of times, I was like, what the hell is that? So I looked it up and saw it was this French singer, and I went and listened to the actual song, and it's definitely not the sort of thing I would listen to, but I was, I was intrigued by the fact that I didn't hear any uh, autotune on her vocals. And the, the overall arrangement of the song sounded kind of old school. It was, it was definitely dance pop, you know, a lot of sequenced, uh, looped stuff. So I went and actually listened to some, some more of her stuff and she just came out with a new album like a few months ago. And there's a really great song on there called Maria with this just absolutely gorgeous. She's a great singer too, but absolutely gorgeous melody and just much more imaginative and well-written than most current pop music, I think. So I've been listening to some of her stuff for the past, or just the past 24 hours. Cool. So yeah, it's good stuff. It's uh, surprising. Jane? Jane, yeah, J A I N, Jane. Okay. I'm gonna look that up. That's the French, good. French singer, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, you, you you got me Very thinking cool. too. So, so it's just nice to hear something that's new that that, that I don't hate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm. Yeah, you, yeah. You said new and TikTok and all that stuff. I so I'll never I'll never see or hear 
But um, uh, I, I, I was. Do you guys do you remember back at back in the eighties? The it was a semi instrumental. I say that just because I, there, there may have been uh, some talking or some sex or something in the background. But it was a je t'aime. It was a I, yeah. I, it, it got a ton of airplay in the eighties. Did that ring any bells? But it does. I'm trying to. Okay, so that and then the song "Wider Shade of Pale." I cannot. And I've got to look the two of them up today because I can't. I can't see the. I can't. I, I think that there's a huge similarity melody wise between the two. I don't recall the actual melody of "Je t'aime," but uh, I think that it has the same same idea structurally melody as as "Wider Shade of Pale," but. Uh, the, the the reason why I that wider shade of pale is on my in my head is because I came across uh, for those who don't know when Thin Lizzy disbanded, uh, uh, Phil Lynott went on to form a band called Grand Slam, and that was the last time I ever saw Phil perform live in Dublin, the SFX and uh, concert hall, um, and they played that night. They played wider shade of pale. And it was a really cool version of it. Of course, you know, I mean, if if <laughs> if Philo did a version of of uh, Heaven on Earth, Heaven is a Place on Earth by Belinda Carlisle, it would sound cool. Yeah, it was it was just a uh, it was just a really uh, anyway. So that's what got me thinking about it. But then I remember in the melody, the the songs sounding sounding very the melody sounding very similar. So I have to look up Jetem, and it would. Uh, uh, Again, kind of a catchy tune, kind of a catchy number, and uh, well worth the, the the listen if you like all that '80s overproduced stuff. But I think there's some shagging going on in the background too, or that was the the uh, the the myth behind, or they were trying to sell more records or whatever. So uh, anyway, and then uh, that's all that side. Put it. I guess then, I don't remember that song. I was uh, I was especially just talking about when you mentioned that. I was thinking of some other kind of like more like a spoken word song. I don't, I don't know what I'm thinking of. Something like warm Le- leatherette or something like that. But I'll, this I'll, is an I'll, actual I'll, song with. It. Yeah. I'll look it up. But again, I, I want to say it's da, 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 da. It's kind of got that, that classical piece, which I can't put my finger on right now, but it's got that. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Yeah. It's some, and, and, and then yeah. in the background, it has some, ah, you know, then it has, you know, this kind of, it, it, it it's a, uh, but, but I, I, again, I don't, recall hating the tune and I, I one of the reasons why i might like the tune too is because we'd we'd have to you know at the dance hall on a saturday night you'd have to ask a girl to dance and that was the uh, basically the only time you get, get close to a close to a woman so anyway but move, moving <laughs> on from there we have uh we have in um god we got so much stuff coming up so this month is now july so we're gonna have uh, young heidi riggs in tow for the uh Wichita, and then we're doing Western Missouri, and then possibly a, a, a Sunday show, TBA. So that's very cool. And then oh. August, back up to uh, um, back up to Montana, and again, we're gonna have we're gonna have you in tow for that. We're get, we're we're uh, working on some some places, and uh, so the Hamilton uh, Celtic Festival and Highland Games, um, uh, Bitterroot. Celtic Festival, blah blah blah. They they have uh, they have acquired the services of of Miss Riggs for the fiddle workshop. They are thrilled thrilled to have you. That's going to be exciting. Yeah, I'm really excited about that. So the classes that I've been doing here in Phoenix with um, Four Peaks Irish Arts um, and at the high schools where they bring me in to do you know an hour hour and a half and teach. Um, an Irish tune and teach them how to learn by ear and how to put it all together. So it's really fun. I, it's something I love doing. So I offered to do that there. And I think I'm doing two Saturday and one Sunday. So hopefully people will bring their instruments and join me. That's great. Yeah, I'm excited. It'll be fun. It'll be really fun. Maybe meet some other other players and see what we can drum up. But yeah, it'll be really fun. I'm excited. Yeah. Heidi, do you have any clips of this? Do you have any clips of you teaching these? I know that you had that wonderful clip where you did that huge uh, seminar thing. Uh, do you have any clips of 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 like a like a what a classroom, what you in a classroom teaching? 
looks like. The reason why I ask is because I'd love to put a clip on here and maybe put a clip on our social media as well to to just, again, get the word out that this is going to happen, that this is something that we can, um, you know, push just just so people can. It, it, it's such a huge, we, we've, we've spoken about it many times before, and, you know, with all the stuff going on, it's very difficult to keep, you know, to, 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 you know, to, to keep this on. But I mean, it, th this is imperative that this stuff gets out there. This is stuff, you know, what you're doing is, is, is not just great work, but it's a, it's, it's a necessary, um, uh, it's, it, 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 it's, it's just, it's just huge. I mean, it, it's this, you know, monstrous thing that has to be taught, you know, you got to keep this thing alive. You got to keep it going. So. I think the hardest thing for people that want to join sessions is, is how do I learn all these tunes? And then, you know, where, how, and they go look up the music and the music is just dots on the page. It's like an outline of the melody, but you can't teach the style from those dots on the page. And that that's recent that music was written down, like maybe since the seventies or eighties that they started transcribing it. But it used to be, you just went to sessions and you just kept hearing tunes and that you learned them by ear. And that's really the right way to learn them because you remember them longer, you pick up on the style at the same time. And so it's hard when you're starting out to know where to go. So everyone looks online for the music and then they hear the recordings and they don't know how to make them line up and they're new to it. And so what I'm trying to do, and some people get it and some people don't, everyone that's tried my class has really liked it but it's getting people to try it that it, it's scary for some people because they want the music in front of them. But once they try it, it, it usually goes over really well. I haven't had anyone not like it, <laughs> but yeah, well, it's, I just, I teach the tune and I just show them if you just listen to little bits at a time and how to do it. And then they can go out and find recordings and learn with recordings. But, um, but yeah, I mean, if I had had someone to sit down with me and teach me the tunes by ear, little by little, you know, and have the patience to do that, I would have learned it much easier too. So I kind of, I kind of found my way through in learning these tunes, but that's, that's what I'm trying to like, you know, put out there. It's not like come join a slow session and hang on you know, for dear life or you know, come prepared. It's nothing like that. It's not scary at all. It's yeah. Well, I'll that's teach it that, to and, you. Just, you know. Yeah, and, and the other thing is too. It, this doesn't have to be for. This doesn't have to be for sessions. I mean, this could be for the person that loves to sit at home and play for themselves, or play for you know, exactly. just I mean, have their have their thing. But this this music is is too important not to have this guidance. I, I, I yeah. think it's a huge thing. So if we can get a clip too, I'd like to send it to Bitterroot and have them put it on their, on yeah. their, on their, on their website, but also just, just make sure that people know it's going to, and, and so we're, and then also we're trying to get the Friday before the festival in either Hamilton and or Missoula, so, somewhere around there, because we're going to try to do this stuff, but I would like to put out there too, to, to, just to get the word out there to, to, to get people to come to this festival and see this thing. It's going to be, and it's going to be tremendous. I've talked to the yeah. guys from Swag, Swagger who were uh, sharing the stage with. Um, they're out of Utah, Salt Lake City. And we're, um, uh, so we're, we're, we're going to share our new drum kit more on that later when uh, Turbo arrives back down from the mountain. We're, uh, um, so we're good. It, 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 and I've already talked to the guys. Uh, I'm really looking forward to meeting them and playing with them. Again, Swagger uh, uh, out of Utah. Check them out. Um, Irish Rock and um, actually Celtic Rock, I guess they call it. But yeah, it's it's, it's good. It's gonna be it's gonna be a nice it's gonna be a nice little thing. So all right, so uh, everybody, as usual, thank you for listening. We are so glad to have you. Slappercast episode, whatever the fuck it is, and uh, yeah, check out the website. We have got a lot of cool stuff coming up. We do want to say a quick uh, quick thank you to. Uh, Trilogy Brew in Old uh, in uh, Old Town Spring. You need to go to blackguards.com to check out our schedule because we're going to be doing a couple of places that we usually wouldn't play, only because some of these clubs that we're playing are they just seem, seem to be just being overrun with TVs and you know, they're just they're putting in all kinds of stuff. It just seems seems like a lot of these places are losing the, the live music kind of feel and stuff like that so when you go to a, a place like ashford pub there's no tv 
it's it, it's a it's it, everything's directed into the one area. Uh, I mean, there's no TV where we are, but a lot of these places that you know you go and there's there's just so much stimulation, there's so much stimulation and posters and buy this and shot around and uh, DJ and blah blah. It's, it, it's overwhelming, so we're doing a little bit a little bit different. Uh, stop it! But Trilogy Brew in Old Town Spring was tremendous, not just because the coffee was out of this world, but yeah. The, it, great stop and just it's such a beautiful town it's it, it's a whole it's a whole day for the family so it's an all ages no cover charge show and we, we just we had a ball um but just just a, a a great deal of thanks to uh trilogy for letting us come in and bring in our own gear and yeah they've been we, very cool yeah yeah so the people love it they're, they're not only because not only is the coffee great there they've got beer so oh yeah i forgot about that they look like a cool Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah very, really cool. very cool. And it, and if you are close to Old Town Spring it, on a Thursday, they have an open mic. And uh, I met Gabby from Black House Tavern, uh, best burger I've had in years, in years. Um, Nathan is the manager slash cook over there. And uh, 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 but uh, Gabby does uh, she, she she performs over there uh, on Thursday nights, and uh, so we're. We're going, to, we're going to be playing this Thursday, so we won't be able to be there, but I'd like to check that out sometime. But anyway, so Old Town Spring, fun for the whole family. And it's, and it's a day, it, 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 you'll spend the whole day there. So FYI, uh, big thanks to them. And yeah. also, a new potato, we're going to be doing the 713, which is 7 July 13th. 13th. It's going to be a, uh, a Thursday afternoon, Friday, or Thursday, uh, 5.30. We're going to start. And uh, just going to go out there and do a set. So 713 is the area code for Houston for the rest of you all around the world. Uh, 713 day. And uh, this is our second annual new potato. Anyway, we are delighted to have you. Slappercast episode number. Blah, blah, blah. And uh, we will uh, we, thank you. Thank you, Heidi, for jumping in at this short notice. And uh, good to see you all again on my brand new computer. <laughs> all right. Uh, cool. See you next time. All right, cheers. So good, uh, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. I know you know him. Everybody knows him. This is our this is our good friend Doc, and he is in charge of the tour. And this is our do's and don'ts of traveling with blackguards to Ireland, twenty twenty three edition. So, Doc, how are you? Doing good, my friend. How are you? Mahan Far. Oh, brilliant! It's absolutely gorgeous here in in in, in Texas. What are we about fifty degrees with a slight breeze and. Uh, I'm sitting in my fridge, is what I'm saying. So, uh, no, it's lovely. Um, so, I just wanted to, I just wanted to put on on camera here and and ha have your smile and face on there to tell our group and to 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 the, the basically the do's and don'ts of traveling abroad. Because I know when I went home in February, I had a I, I had a devil of a time trying to find a place to change money. The banks don't do it anymore. The post office doesn't do it. I mean, you just have to find it's so rare to find. So if you bring dollars with you, you're going to have a beast, a beast of a time trying to get them changed into euro. Absolutely. So first of all, I, I, a lot comes down to the bank that you deal with and their commission fees. Um, a lot of the times it actually works out better if you take your money out in Ireland at an ATM. Now, not really possible with 80 people traveling there send them all to the same ATM. <laughs> that, could be, that could be a long wait. Um, so maybe just a few quid uh, to bring over, you know, a couple of hundred walk around money. I would say the best deal really is though, when, when you are on the ground in Ireland is to get to an ATM, take out the maximum allowed. It's usually like 400 euros and it works out so much cheaper than doing it here on the other side, you know? Yeah. So that's my advice there on the cash. Yeah, and, and by the way, they take credit cards everywhere. So all in yeah. all, you could probably get away with not even using cash, except for tipping the bus driver and your guides. That's that's the only thing you really, so tip, really uh, need. Tipping the, tip the bus driver, that's going to be a whip around at the end of the tour, correct? On the, uh, that's, yes, that's, that's, the way, that's the way you like to do it? Yeah. So we have one yeah, person like on each that. bus, and yeah, just and just put it in an envelope, and Bob's your uncle. That way there's no... There's no messing around at baggage, uh, you know, at the drop off on the thing, on uh, you know, at the airport and on the way, you know, because everybody's just rushing for the flight and trying to give the line. So good, 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 good to know. 
Um, other thing is too, obviously you want to have your medication. You want to have all your stuff in order before you go. Obviously the chemists or pharmacy as they're known over here. Um, they, they, they have a lot of stuff and there's a lot of stuff over the counter, but you, you just want to make sure that you're not caught on guard, you know? So, uh, what else would you say is yeah, the blood pressure medications, your anxiety medications, whatever it is, um, you know, your weed. I mean, it, technically it's illegal in Ireland, so you're not so supposed to it, bring it. Pack it in your spouse's uh, in case. Exactly. Nailed okay, it. good stuff. Good stuff. Note to self. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there are people that are going over early to get acclimatized and to get ready for this stuff. Um, my advice has always been, Get off the plane, uh, get to a hotel, get a couple hours skip, like no more than two hours sleep, and then up, and then you're on the schedule. That's my, what's your... Uh, well, as you know, I'm from Kerry, and you're from Dublin, and we have very, very much a difference of opinions. So I'm going to tell you, my view on this is, if you can sleep, great, on the, fl- on the plane coming over, but do not go to sleep for a kip. When you get there, try and stay awake until at least 8 p.m. You wake up the next morning at 6.30, 7 o'clock, fresh as a daisy, ready to go. I get you. So cocaine is yeah. what you're saying. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. No, I, what, what I always try and tell people, though, is uh, you definitely don't want to get it there because no, no. it's been everywhere before it gets there. <laughs> Very true. Note to self. Yeah. We just have to tell yeah. the drummer that. Good stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. And then as far as as far as the uh, bus goes and everything, you know, we just we just like everybody to be down there, you know, 10 minutes before the bus leaves, you know, just so there's no you Yeah, know. and and look, we take, we take the precautions usually to tell people to be there uh 10 minutes ahead ahead of the actual schedule. So when we at the end of each day, the bus driver is going to say a few words such as, hey, this is these are my recommendations for tonight, uh, which we'll have gone over before. Um, you know, laggards are playing in such and such. Uh, have a great night. Please be down at the lobby at 9 o'clock in the morning or 10 o'clock, whatever time departure is. And that's it. It just Lovely. gives a quick briefing before, before everybody gets off so they know the score. And if so they don't lo- make it, then it's their own tough shit. Yeah, good stuff. All right. And then, um, I mean, I right now, I mean, when I went home in February, the uh, the the exchange rate was pretty much neck and neck. So there wasn't a huge, you know, like before, you know, uh, where, you know, years gone by when you'd go home, the 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 pound or you know was, was was so weak to the dollar. You know, now it's pretty much neck and neck, right? It's it's still still pretty much. Uh, it's 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 kind of right now. You're. In around the one hundred nine, one ten. So okay, for a thousand dollars or a thousand euros is eleven hundred dollars. Good, good, good. All right, and then nothing else that jumps to mind that you would recommend. Well, obviously, uh, an important one is clothing. You know, you're talking forty to forty to fifty degrees, fifty on the high side. It's certainly not a warm time of the year, but uh, it's very comfortable. So bring your sweaters and and your rain jackets, and uh, you know, just be prepared for the worst and hope for the best. Yep. yep. Uh, regarding converters, everybody needs to have a converter for their phone charger, computer, computer outlet, whatever you need. So just just remember to get that. There's thousands of different versions on on Amazon, so it's nice and easy to get that. Now on on the ground, um, a lot of the guests are going to be doing some shopping, so very important to remember. At any point, actually, this is this is for, for anything, be it restaurant, bars, shops, whatever. When you're asked, what currency would you like to run your card in? It's very important to say, run it in euros. If you don't run it in euros, they will, they will add 3.5 to 3.75% to make the conversion to U.S. dollars. So it's a, it's a, it's a banking snag. Uh, there's no way around it, really. I'm surprised it's still an issue, but it is. And um, I just recommend always, always in the currency of the country you're in. Yep. So that's that's the rule of thumb. Um, when you're buying merchandise, be it your iron sweaters or your your paddy caps or whatever, always ask for a receipt for the VAT back. When you get to the airport, you can fill out the little receipt that you're given. 
And within six weeks, you'll receive 23% of your purchase back. So you spend, you spend $1,000, six weeks later, you got a credit on your account for $230. Yeah. yeah. So that is essentially the tax. You're getting your tax back for the, for, 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 for the purchase. Yeah. And it's, and it's, yeah, it actually adds up. So, and, and also we also oh, yeah. tell you to look at the labels and don't buy the made in China crap. You get the stuff that's made in Ireland and not only is it, you know, that's what we always push you towards that. It's, you know, very, quality. yeah, exactly. Quality. And, and it's, it's, uh, and, and then plus you're, you're, you know, you you know that you're getting value for money, but you're also, uh, you know, when you get your VAT backs to VAT back your tax, it's, uh, it's, it, it is quite substantial. So it, it's, uh, it's worth keeping track of it. Absolutely. And the good thing is you, you, the first place you go, you're going to get an envelope and just keep adding your receipts in there. It doesn't account for, you know, food and beverage, but anything in the craft markets or anything like that, you can put towards it. Yeah. And yeah, uh, yeah that's quick. You know? Yeah, indeed. That's about it. I mean, and, and any more questions, you know, you're, you're, you're always welcome to, uh, to email us here, call us here. We're always, we're open 24 hours a day and seven days a week. Uh, Doc, like I said, we, we, we love having, and we're going to have you on again, you know, just to, uh, to, to, you know, as we get closer, but, uh, always love having you on. You're, you're a gem and, uh, just uh, you know, take care of them, them, the, them babies and and mammy and all that over there, right? Sounds good, my man. Yeah, just great talking and, and to you, lads. Sounds good. Listen, thanks a million. Cheers. Cheers. Bye.